Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. Las Vegas is a very, very unique city. A lot of things take place in Las Vegas, but some of the great things that happen surround its people, surround those who do things in life to help others. On our program today, you'll meet two individuals who have put together an amazing event that will take place right here in Las Vegas to give other people a chance at life. When we come back, you'll meet these two amazing individuals in a special event on October 13th. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions, a giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals, and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions, or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy Painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. Hey, it's Mark Chinook from Monday's Dark, and you are watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Giving back. In today's world, a lot of people talk about giving back, but very few actually do. But yet giving back today, as we've seen with everything that took place in Florida and Texas, can mean the biggest to all other people. On our program today, two individuals who have given back and continue to give back. We're very honored to have the man who is actually the proprietor here at the Liberace Mansion, Martin Ravenhill, and also an amazing, amazing woman in our community here in Las Vegas, Barbara Lee Willen, to both of you, welcome to our program. Thank you. you know, Thank you. This idea about giving back, um, you know, we've all become so much aware today of what giving back means. Uh, the disaster that, that has hit, uh, not only uh, in Florida and Texas, but we've seen the ravishing fires that have taken place in, throughout the West. We've seen the, the horror of an earthquake in Mexico. Martin, you're from the United Kingdom, coming here to America, and I honestly believe, that, if I am honest with myself, that, that Americans give back more than I think people realize. What does it mean to you? What do you see giving back as meaning to you? As far as I'm concerned, I'm a huge believer in um, <clears throat> recognition for me is so much more valuable to me than reward. And so it is what will make me continue to thrive and carry on. And uh, even when I don't foresee it, uh, just recognition. If I, if I receive recognition, that does it for me. There, there could have been a time, Martin, when you purchased this mansion that you put in your own personal money, have now spent millions on this mansion, that some people might have said, well, that's, that's enough. You've saved a historic place here in Las Vegas. Matter of fact, it's the first registered historic home like this in Las Vegas. But you went further. You created another foundation. You created even more to give back. What was that inside of you that said, it's not just about money, it's about helping others. Uh, it just seemed the right and correct thing to do. Um, I opened up a foundation, uh, 501c3, and it's um, called Friends of the Liberace Mansion Foundation. And the idea is it's to help people in the performing and great creative arts. And um, the, 
I'm such a big believer. There's so much talent here. We are the not we're the entertainment capital of the world, and there's a lot of people behind all the stars who are understudies, and they just need a little bit of break. And I can do that. That was so much a part of who Liberace was. It was. I mean, it's the one side of Liberace that I don't think most people, most of the audience, even knows who that was, who that individual was. But he believed in giving back. He believed in helping others, especially those young, vibrant, upcoming artists that he believed needed that same break. Is that a, was that a reason for you? It was partially one of the main reasons, yes, it was. And my dear friend Barbara, a woman here, she has her own foundation, and there are many parallels to that. And I'll let her talk to you about that. But um, it, it kind of helped us. Let's, let's get this going. Barbara, you and I have known each other for a long time. Um, yes. One of the things that has always impressed me most upon you and your wonderful husband, Bruce, is, is how much you two have indeed given back to this community. Listen, you're both very successful in life. What you've done in life has been those things that, that many of us wish we could have, and that's the dollars and cents. But for the two of you, and for you in particular, and your foundation, it's gone past that. It's gone to help people like those who need it. What is that driving force behind Barbara Lee Woolen that makes you do that? Well, I think it started out when I was a very young kid. Because even as a young child, I was always into volunteerism. My, uh, my father was a police officer, turned, eventually turned businessman. And um, so he taught me values of service. And when I was a young kid, I was a candy striper. After that, when I was in college, um, I had volunteered all throughout my college days. Um, I was on the Commission for Human Relations. Uh, in the 1970s, which dealt with discriminatory practices against women and, and at that racial time, minorities. And at that time, that was yes. a tough position to be in. Yes, That was yes. really a tough position. To, listen, I'm a, I'm a kid that grew up through the 60s and 70s, and I know what we faced as a country through then. Mm. And you took the step forward mm. to help. Was it just because of your dad and what you learned, or because of what you felt inside. I've talked a lot about this self-spirit, this individual inside. Yeah. I have this sense that's more who you are. Well, that's true, but those values that <laughs> comprise me came from the values that were instilled in me by my parents. I mean, they were my role models, so mm -hmm. I internalized them. I guess I had the choice to reject them, but I internalized those values. Las Vegas is known for many different things. We're known as the entertainment capital of the world. We're known as the gaming capital of the world. We're known as the now becoming the restaurant capital of the world. People outside of our own community, and even some inside of our community, don't understand that we're also a part of the philanthropic leadership of the world. Is that something people should know? Well, absolutely, and I always, in promoting Las Vegas um, on my own, as you know, I once ran for a lieutenant governor, yes, and did. part of the duties of that office uh, would have been, at that time, the head of tourism. And so I take it upon myself to promote Las Vegas and Nevada and all of its values, not just as a tax shelter, but what a strong sense of community that we have here. Martin, when you came here, when you came here, um, I mean, you, you purchased this incredible mansion on, on, on literally a whim on that day. <laughs> That's right. What, what were your feelings? What were your ideas about what Las Vegas was that you now call part of your home? <clears throat> I, a wave of responsibility came over me, and um, I saw something which needed to be protected, and I couldn't understand why it wasn't. And so I had to step up. Uh, luckily, I had the stomach for it. And um, 
<laughs> and, and the and wallet. Magic it. Um, <laughs> well, that, yeah, that has merit. Um, <laughs> so, but you know, it was something I had to do. No one was doing it, and um, so this needed. This is uh, Liberace was so iconic. And so, so because of that, this this wonderful home is not open to the public. This wonderful home. Um, in, in, in your desire to protect its heritage and protect the various things about it, you don't, you don't want people just to come in here. But yet you believe, you believe that it should be utilized to the extent that Liberace wanted it to. And you have opened it for philanthropic uh, events. The two of you have now joined forces for an event on October 13th inside this mansion. That's right that will not only help other people, but will give community members an opportunity to see this incredible place that I'm lucky enough to do my TV show in. Barbara, what does it make you feel to know that you're part of the impetus to make this happen? Well, I'm very excited, and excited and honored and uh, my foundation is set up to benefit children and the arts, and it coincides with the mission statement of Martin's, and so we have great synergy. There is there's a feeling that you get in this house. There's a feeling that is in this house about not only the music that was in here, but the spirit that was in here. You're shaking your head. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I experienced the spirit one night. Did you really? One day. Was it day or night? Day, when we were in the other apartment and uh, no one was around, and a door slammed. Out and I nowhere. screamed, and everyone came running and out of nowhere. And I spoke with another gal that was visiting at the time, and she had spent the night, and uh, she experienced spiritual happenings during the evening. This house is full of energy. Full of and energy. And as soon as people walk in the door, it's like they've had five glasses of champagne. It's like... <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not bad, just, it's not bad it's energy. Not, no, it's no. good energy. It's good, it's good it's energy. Good. So this event on October 13th is going to be an amazing event. I'm going to take a break for a couple <laughs> of seconds. Best. When I come back, I want to talk about this event. I want to talk about how people can be involved. And I want to talk about how it's going to benefit young entertainers, that all they want is a break. So we'll take a break. When we come back, more of this amazing idea. Think about what you could do if you could just feel and sense what the Liberace Mansion is all about. We'll talk about that in just a couple of seconds. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Eamon Springall of Stitched at the Cosmopolitan, and you're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Las Vegas is known for some amazing events. Um, one event each year benefits um, the Lou Rubo Center for uh, uh, Brain Health. It's the, truly an amazing event. Uh, years ago, there were uh, great events uh, held by um, Andre Agassi uh, for his school that, uh, that took place. Uh, event for Opportunity Village that helped so many uh, young people in our community. Uh, there isn't a week that goes by that there's not some special event or another in Las Vegas. But this event on October 13th will be very, very unique. An event, an opportunity that will set right here in the Liberace Mansion. Once again, our very special guest, uh, Martin Ravenhill and uh, Barbara Lee Woolen. To both of you, welcome back Thank to the you. program. Okay. So this is an event, first of its kind, first of its kind in, in Las Vegas, that we're going to do it within the Liberace Mansion or anything that's allowed. And this is really about helping. It's really about giving back, but it's different. This is going to be, if I'm not mistaken, tell me if I'm right or wrong, this is going to be a masquerade ball and thrown in there just in case a masquerade ball was not enough. <laughs> it's going to be a murder mystery. 
a musical murder mystery. Yeah. How did that all come about? The First of, of all, can you say that five times fast? I can, I can. Yeah. <laughs> but you won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we missed mayhem, didn't we? <laughs> How did that come about? How did you it come about? Uh, uh, Barbara and I were having cocktails one night, and uh, we were at a murder mystery, and um, she has a very lucky husband. And uh, mm -hmm. he just win he, he wins <laughs> everything. Absolutely, Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. And um, guess whose table out of the whole, you know, all of the tables um, and the murder mystery won the free murder mystery. He won uh, a prize just out of a raffle Bruce drawing. Did. And so we thought, what can we do with this? And uh, so we thought, we both have foundations. We can do something very, very special with this. We've won something which we don't really need, but perhaps we can help others. But you could have, listen. Let's be honest, you could have just said, you know what, I'm gonna have a few people at my home and we'll have a murder mystery there. But you didn't. You, you w both of you went back to what I talked about in the beginning of the show, and that is giving back. Well, that's, <laughs> it's what we enjoy doing. And, um, what do you think I did I for the masquerade ball? I bet, <laughs> <laughs> see I'm shocked at that, Barbara. <laughs> As a kid, I always gave the annual Halloween party. From the time I was a kid till the time I stopped living in my parents' home, I gave the annual Halloween party. It's my favorite time mm -hmm. of the year. I love when children come to my door, and I not only, I, I not only give candy, I give gifts. And, and it's really could I have your dress? <laughs> and it's, but it's wonderful to see their eyes open and, and have an enjoyable time. I would think a masquerade ball on Friday, the 13th of October, <laughs> which is amazing by itself to do a murder mystery <laughs> on Friday the 13th, but anyway, it, it, it's a wonderful idea. That's what we figured. It was a bit <laughs> like, you know, the solar eclipse. Everything lined up and uh, we lined up and uh, we said, let's do it. And um, we are doing an amazing job at it so far. Yes, and yes. It's, it's going to be the talk of the year. I mean. And in, in, in you, my wonderful lady, have done something special, from what I understand. You're, you're going to display some incredible jewelry at this event. Well, I personally will not be displaying it. It will be, but I, these are uh, uh, people but you made it happen. with another foundation right. uh, with similar missions to, to help children and for the arts, and it's Cassandian jewels and uh, Castangian has a foundation and they have as part of their foundation they have a uh, Hollywood collection of very famous pieces of jewelry that they use to tour and uh, raise money and across you, the country. You brought one with you didn't you? I did bring one of them. Could and you share it with us? I sure could and it's right over here and uh, this was made for a Persian princess Oh my! <laughs> from oh. the wow. early. Oh my! Uh, <laughs> I, I, I've I've lost count on how many pieces of turquoise, and and I I couldn't count how many diamonds there are there. There are a lot of diamonds. There are a total weight of over sixty carats of diamonds in the piece. Oh my! And uh, it was made by Esprit of London. London Martin, okay. and it was made by the Queen's jeweler. This is its original case. It's from the uh, 1980s, early 1980s, and uh, this is part of the uh, jewels and collection that you'll be seeing that night of the event. Now, some of the other pieces from the Hollywood collection. You want me to hold that for you? No, thanks. <laughs> 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 okay, I tried. <laughs> some of the other pieces. I could become very popular very quickly, by the way. <laughs> I'll bet you could. <laughs> a girl will follow you yes, anywhere, anywhere if you have been. <laughs> or a boy, for that matter. But anyway. Uh, we're going to have uh, pieces that were owned uh, previously by celebrities. So there'll be pieces here uh, owned by Faye Dunaway, wow. uh, Ava Gabor, uh, Terry Moore, uh, the Madonna Tiara. Really? Uh, that she wore when she married Guy Ritchie. Uh, and, uh, All some of those will be here. Yes, and some pieces from the Howard Hughes collection. Wow. 
uh, pieces that, uh, uh, in fact, there's a funny story about a pair of earrings that we're going to display that uh, Howard Hughes gave to Terry Moore. And she said that uh, he gave her those earrings uh, after she laid off sweets for two weeks as a reward. He nice. brought them back from Listen, Europe. Listen, <laughs> give me a ring, I'll lay off sweets forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are other things happening that night. One of the most amazing, uh, truly amazing ladies of this community that I've known ever since the first time that I came, came to this Las Vegas 40 years ago, uh, is going to be honored as a humanitarian. This is a lady who began her life as a cowgirl, later became a showgirl, and, and then married an amazing man who helped create some of the magic that is Las Vegas. Uh, humanitarian uh, of the year uh, that you're going to honor is uh, Cindy Domaney, correct? Yes. And for those who don't know, say a little bit about Cindy. She is a phenomenal person. There is not one bad bone in her body. And uh, she is very gregarious. She is on about 25 boards of different charities in the Valley. And um, a dear friend of mine and Barbara's. And uh, we just and value her for being Cindy. And the one thing about Cindy, I believe, is that her heart walks into the room three days before she ever gets here. <laughs> she has this amazing heart. I mean, just an amazing heart. And, and this town, I think, is lucky to, to have her. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that she's being honored that way. But also being honored is a, is a young woman soprano that will be highlighted that That's evening. Emily, yes. Right? Tell me about Emily. Emily is um, an, one of the emerging artists. And uh, she's a soprano, and she her voice um, is like a flute. I mean, it's like a nightingale. I, I, I can't really describe it. It is mesmerizing. It is just magical. And, um, and she'll be singing that night. Absolutely, yes. And, and I, uh, yes. I think the audience will be blown away by, by yes, her. Yes, you get tingles. It's, yes. it's that sort of voice. So yes. we're just enthralled. So I, I, don't, I don't want to end the show without telling the community and telling the world, really, if they're interested in, in coming, how do, they, how do they find out? How do they learn about it? Where do they, where do they get the information from? Um, all you have to do is email info at lib the Liberace Mansion. Info com. at the Liberace Mansion. Dot com. Dot com. Info um, at the Liberace Mansion. Com. Info at the Liberace Mansion com. And, and we will give all, all information, the information. All the information them. you need. It, it is a. <coughs> we're, we're sold out basically. There are a few more remaining tickets, but uh, unless you've sold them, Barbara. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But if people are interested, <laughs> as soon we as they do can. We still have limited are, availability. Good. Good. Yes. I good. don't know if yes, there are any VIP do. seats left. Yes, we do have. Some left. Well, I guess. I, I want to say that, that this is another shining example of what this community is all about. Uh, two amazing mm -hmm. people, the two of you, um, giving back uh, to make our artists, our young artists, have more and greater hope for a future. And I think, I think that there's a lot of people out in the audience that, that couldn't say thank you, so I'll say thank you for that, well, thank for you. being two incredible people. And, and, and I appreciate you being on the program, and I appreciate what you're doing. And, and, uh, and, and I think I'll take the jewelry home. But <laughs> <laughs> I think you won't. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. No, it's our pleasure. I'm thank you very much, both of you, for being here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Steve. You know, you. Las Vegas, as I said at the beginning, is, is known for a lot of different things, but its heart, its philanthropy, is the soul of what this community is all about. October 13th to date, it's a Friday. Murder mystery and a masquerade ball. More importantly, it helps young artists. We'll be right back with some closing words. Stay with us.
news. In today's world, news has become even more important in our lives. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. For some 40 years, Las Vegas has been my home, and it's been good to me. Now, I want to give back. That's why I started The Now Report, the independent voice newspaper, fair, balanced, unbiased, online and mobile, and it's free. The time has come for an independent voice because news is important. The date, October 13th. The event, my goodness, a masquerade ball in Las Vegas, all to help young people. And on top of that, it will be an amazing murder mystery. But the masquerade ball, that could be the best. It might even be an event to die over. I'm Steve Shore. Until the next time, be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. I've been proud to host the TV show Under the Vegas Sun. We've had mayors and entertainers and some of the true movers and shakers of Las Vegas. Well, we're growing again. We'll now be seen in 209 cities in America through our network, Walk TV, as well as in six foreign countries and in Las Vegas. We'll also be seen four times each week on Cox Communications, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m., and now Sundays at 7 p.m. on channels 1096 and 96. I just wanted to say thank you. of VATV.